Hey everybody, Norman here, and this video is going to be uh, kind of a, it's a tale of a fountain pen model infatuation and how sometimes it pays to be unobservant and oblivious, which I am sometimes a master at. Um, the infatuation centers around a pen that I've come to consider the Chinese pen model of 2023. And based on its value and bang for the buck, perhaps the 2023 pen of the year. And uh, I'm of course referring to the Jinhao Dadao 9019. And uh, I did a review of this model last year, and I'll link to that in the uh, description below. But my love affair with this model has actually con continued unabated. Uh, in the approximately six months or so that it's been in my possession. One is always in my shirt pocket and uh, I have several pens in my shirt pocket so it's not the only one but uh, it's always one of the ones that I reach for on a daily basis. And so it's consequently in the in the last six months, one version or another, one color or another of this has become part of my daily carry. And let's go into a little more detail. Anon. Okay, a slightly different view and lighting situation. I am standing up over one of my desks and I have LEDs on my head. It's, a, it's an impressive thing. Anyway, the reason I'm doing this is I wanted to show the mat that I have as opposed to the regular wooden surface that I normally use. Wood is great, but I wanted to uh, show one of these mats, and uh, maybe I'm going to sit down now. As usual, this is an experimental type of uh, filming. <laughs> and now the camera is in the way of the light. And there we go. Now, you've probably seen this mat before. Uh, if you watch other pen reviewers, um, lots of people seem to, to use this. Uh, Doodlebud, Doodlebud comes to mind as uh, someone who uses this mat for his pen reviews. But I want to let you in on a, a little secret among pen reviewers. There is actually only one of these mats. And we mailed it, we mail it from one reviewer to the next. We each get to keep it for a week and do as many videos as we can during that period. So actually, uh, Doodlebud is on the, the list next to send this to. So I just wanted you to see it before I ship it off. Um, speaking of other pen reviewers, um, Hemingway Jones, who has a very interesting channel also, uh, kind of inspired me with the idea of uh, changing up the mat or the surface that I do pen reviews upon. He always has some very nice maps and different types of things underneath. And I would like to do some maps too. But prior to that, uh, I thought I'd make some of my own because I had some images and um, vintage paper 
that I'd gotten from AliExpress probably a year, year and a half ago. And I discovered while I was preparing to do that, making my own, and here was my very first attempt. Not perfect, but uh, not too bad either. I think I better stand up again. I, uh, it gets more and more difficult as one gets over 30. Um, <laughs> this lighting situation is horrible. So I'm going to turn off these head-mounted LEDs. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better. Um, so I had all these from AliExpress, like 30 different handwriting samples, old documents, which I created this mat from after I had discovered the amazing world of Mod Podge, which I had never heard of. And much to my chagrin, many people that learned that fact that I'd never heard of this laughed uproariously. And as you go on YouTube, there's channel after channel on doing projects with Mod Podge. Uh, as an aside, if you're wondering, this is my most recent pen, which I got from um, Cult Pens in England. And that's uh, Le Bon 325. And this particular color pattern is the Cambridge. And I have a broad nib on this, which may or may not come into focus because I can't put my hand behind it because my other hand is holding the damn camera. All right, we'll do a review of this in the future. My next Mod Podge pad adventure was this one where I didn't stick so religiously to the just using the size and square shape of the various handwriting samples but as you can see here uh, overlaid on each other and then most recent one, this was a, another purchase from AliExpress a long time ago, all these little um, food, let me see if I can effectively zoom in. Food labels that would go on the side of crates in the 30s and 40s, telling you what was inside the crate. So I applied all those individually with Mod Podge, and then I ran out of these little labels, so continued with uh, some of the other images that I had. So I just wanted to alert you to the fact that uh, I hope to have different backgrounds in the future and uh, this will be shortly on its way to the next reviewer. So I started off with the six original offerings of the uh, 9019 Didao. The black dark blue, burgundy, which uh, they advertise as red. That's not red. The blue demonstrator, translucent blue. The red demonstrator, translucent red. And the true demonstrator, a uh, clear plastic. And just to reiterate some of the um, 
some of the really terrific features of this pen model. Let me take the black one out. You have the truly oversized body. Uh, but it's reflected in a very subtle and sleek design. You know, some of its design features, most notably the clip, are reminiscent of the Namiki Yukari Royal, or Royale. Um, but there's also here on the on the clip a very classy Jinhao, which clearly separates it from the Pilot Namiki pen. And just, it's such a handsome looking model. The um, cap band is similarly understated. So we have Jin Hao on the front, followed by Dadao, and then number 9019. And in my previous review of of this pen, again, uh, I discuss the meaning of Dadao. However, unscrewing the cap is where the real surprise with this model comes in. The really great number eight size nib, which Jin Hao first introduced in the one the X159. Um, oh, for those again, I'm holding this camera, so this may be a little awkward, but for those who are concerned about uncapping, it's one, two, and a half. And I don't mind that at all. Uh, a pen of this uh, size, it should be an event to use. And uh, it calls for some extra, extra attention. Anyway, when the cap is removed, uh, one is immediately rewarded by the very attractive two-toned number eight nib. And uh, as I'm recording these, recording this, this is available in extra fine, fine, or medium. I've had, I have all three, and uh, I'm happy with the writing characteristics of all three nibs. Jin Hao has really upped their game in the last couple of years. Um... But it's really unscrewing the barrel that caused my first real intake of breath since I had seen the number eight nib previously. And that was this humongous converter. Um, for 50 years, we've been used to a specific size of converter and a specific capacity of ink. And uh, this innovation really blew, thing, blew things out of the water. Now, to show you what I next want to show you about that converter and comparing it to others, I'm going to have to pause this and set up the camera and no longer just hold it in hand. So be back momentarily. All right, so here we have a typical converter. This happens to be uh, the little band one from uh, 
the new 325 Cambridge that I showed earlier. Um, there are variations on this, but, you know, very typical in, in size. And then the first innovation from Jin Hao last year was in their uh, 100, 100 overlay models is they came out with this same size but new converter which was just much more attractive than a typical converter with its uh, gold piston knob And I really, really like this. It's, uh, it's just an uplifting, up leveling of something that we've been used to for 50 years. So I thought that was terrific. And then with the, the Dow 9019, they continued that theme of the gold. piston knob on the converter, but look at the difference in size. Almost uh, double the capacity. On Jin Hao's website, they talk about uh, capacity of 2.1 milliliters. Uh, other people have said something slightly less than that. Everybody's measurement is a little bit different, but I think you can plainly see what they've done with the converter and it's it's threaded too um, I don't know why someone didn't design this for mass-produced inexpensive fountain pens long ago but kudos to Jin Hao for this innovation alone um, now, a couple of months after the release of the original six models, they came out with a limited edition color called Ocean Blue. And this looks a little bluer on the, and lighter in color on the camera than it does in real life. In real life, it's a, a deeper teal, uh, but really very, very attractive. And this is the one that is most often uh, in my pocket for use. It's the one that I carry out into the world at large. So... Fairly recently, I was tooling around on AliExpress and saw several new colors for the Dadao that I needed to complete my collection. Well, I ordered from two different uh, vendors a single pen, which was this, which is a, a green demonstrator. And this translucent looks, you know, really very nice, just like the, let's say, the red version that I'd gotten earlier. But you can immediately see a difference, which is the converter is different. It's no longer that gold piston knob. Rather, they've made a change again to the piston. This is attractive, but I, I actually prefer the gold in appearance. And that's this one. Maybe this saves them a little bit uh, in manufacturing costs. I don't know the reason that they they did this specifically, but it works flawlessly and it's that threaded oversize 
converter once again. So we're happy with that. However, the other surprise that I received when I got this pen that I hadn't noticed when ordering it was the nib. And this is referred to as the heartbeat nib. And you can see that rather than a standard straight slit between the tines, the ink runs along a heartbeat pattern. And my initial reaction to this was, yeah, it's attractive, but that ain't going to work very well. And uh, as I'll show you in the writing sample in a, another version that I've gotten since, I, there's no difference. It flows perfectly well and really looks neat. So that's the new heartbeat nib. Then while we're on the subject of the 9019, let me just say that my most recent acquisition is this, which is a true red. Unlike they referred to as red and I referred to as burgundy earlier. So this red also has that heartbeat nib. And I actually have this one inked, black ink, and we'll do some writing with this a little bit later, but you can hopefully see that the, uh, the heartbeat channel shows some black ink in it. However, the surprise when I had ordered this and what I thought were three other new colors what arrived was, let me get this in order, these three pens. No, that wasn't the one. These three pens. I think that was the order they came in. Doesn't really matter. Um, let me say, what the hell is going on? They look just like the Dadao 9019. They're three new colors. But they're smaller. In all dimensions, smaller. Length, width, actually the only thing that's identical are the clips. So it's Jin Hao, Dadao, number 9016, not number 9019. So this is a new model that they've come out with. I didn't even pay attention or realize when I place my order on AliExpress and these uh, original ones, three that I received, have a number six nib, old Jin Hao style, still very, very attractive. These uh, three were all mediums. But this is a regular size pen, not the oversized pen of the 9019. And also has the newer designed cartridge converter. It is oversized, but it's a little bit shorter to fit the dimensions of this new pen than the one in the 
15 and I will share some measurements page of measurements uh, shortly so you can see the difference but what, a, what another terrific innovation from Jin Hao. I love the size of the 9019. I find it very, very comfortable. But it's too big for some people, I'm sure. And this is a full-sized version of it for those uh, who find the 9019 a little bit too large. And this is not a small pen, as you'll see when I post the, the measurements. But it's more typical of what a full-sized or large pen is these days. And uncapped, you can see, uh, and unposted. No problem with uh, size or length. And posted... I rarely post my pens, but it does, because of the material used, it doesn't back weight at all. So if you enjoy posting, you're in luck. So this is a kind of a brown um, demonstrator. The orange. And the white. So these were the first three that were available. And then subsequent to that, they've come out with the all black. And the clear demonstrator. So Jin Hao, you are lighting the pen world on fire. On fire with all of your innovations. And the most incredible thing, of course, is, is the value of these pens. Um, all of them under $10, except for the special edition, limited edition, Ocean Blue, which was you know, something like 12 or $13 when I purchased it. Phenomenal pricing on this, on these pens. And these are the two black side by side. And I'm going to have to change uh, camera angle again to really, yeah, maybe if I put them in here. So that's the, and let me put it in hand again. That's the 9019 black on the left and the 9016 black on the right. And let me show you those dimensions. Okay, here we have a Fontaine notebook and I wrote these uh, dimensions and measurements earlier. So the weight of the pen uh, 31.6 grams versus 21 for the 9016. Weight of the cap 11.3 versus 8.5. Length capped, 147.4 millimeters versus 143. Length without cap, 129.4 versus 121.8. Length posted, 168 versus 154.8. Cap length, 66.6 .6 versus 64.2. Cap width. 18.7 versus 15.9. Barrel length, 16.3 versus 12.7. Section length, 19.1 versus 16.8. Section width, 
14.5 versus 12. Converter width, 9.2 versus 8.6. So even the converter is a little bit narrower. And the converter length, 33.9 versus 25. And of course the 9019 has the number eight size nib and the 9016 has the number six nib. Really not all that much to show writing wise because these are both medium nibs. And the fact that one, this one is a number eight size and the one of the 9016 is a number six size doesn't really affect anything as far as the writing. I'm doing this while holding the camera, so... And this has... Uh, what did I put in this? Hongdian Black ink. And well, I'm not going to show the nib up close again. Let me see if I can do it this way. All right, the lighting isn't great. I showed it to you before with the uh, the heartbeat nib. And this is the is a ninety sixteen to Dow with the number six chin hound nib. Let me see if I can write while I'm looking through the camera, probably not. Boy, it's strange. <laughs> There's a real disconnect as you do this, looking through the camera rather than looking at the, the pen itself. And this is uh, Levenger Fireball, which I used in my last review as well. Oh, this is so weird doing this, looking through the phone, the camera, not looking at what I'm actually doing on the paper. Um, so this is the 9016. So whichever size you eventually choose. These are both wonderful pens. And that's all she wrote. Literally. <laughs> Take care. So thanks for going on a brief tour with me of uh, my 2023 Chinese pen of the year, if not pen of the year. The uh, the Dow 9019, truly in red, this one, and the Dow 9017, the one that fooled me. And uh, if you like the video, please indicate by liking it, subscribe, share, send me. Uh, Pens directly. No, I'm kidding. Money is money is good enough. I can buy my own pens, and uh, I will see you next time. Enjoy your pens. Take care.